Amen. All right. Who are we? PYG. What does that mean? How do we live? For what purpose? That's right. That was kind of a little weak, but that's okay. Normally, you guys are, maybe it's the pizza. Okay, so we're coming to youth group. Uh, we're gonna, oh, what? I'll give you another chance. CYG? CYG? What's in us? How do we live? For what purpose? Okay. That's okay. So, guys, um, seriously, in all seriousness, CYG, 413G2G, all of it. Okay, and I just, for me, guys, for you, for you guys, I don't want to, I don't want to preach to you, I, because I, I remember what, when it was like, what it was like to be your, your age. Um, I got a lot of people preaching at me, and you know, it's not that it was bad; it was good. But I, I, what I want for you guys, excuse me, just, I just need 15, 20 minutes of your time. What I want you guys to really do is think, like contemplate, think about these things that. Um, that the Bible says these things that I believe to be true deep in my heart, like really wrestle with it, okay? And the whole thing centers around who Jesus is. Who is Jesus? More importantly, who is Jesus to you? Do you have a personal relationship with him because that's what he wants? And like anyone who loves you, um, you know, and, and of course I'm still in love with my wife, but when we were in that honeymoon stage, like we could spend eight hours together at a bookstore and it would be like 30 minutes. Um, it didn't matter, I just wanted to be with her. And that's exactly how Jesus is with you, but just infinitely times more. Like he just wants you to be like, hey, hey Jesus, like I wanna know you more. Like that's all he wants, he just wants your attention. He wants your time. Okay, and last week or two weeks ago, um, we went through the pieces of evidence of who Jesus is. He was 100% man. He did walk. There was a man named Jesus. This is a historic fact, archaeological fact, historic fact. There's mountains of evidence of it, but he was 100% man. He claimed to be 100% God. He was actually crucified on a cross, like he actually shed blood. He actually died on that cross. He was actually put in a tomb, and there's Body. The tomb is empty. These are all facts. So who is that Jesus to you? And do you have a daily personal relationship with him? And two weeks ago, we went over this chart. Um, I forgot her name, but she spent five years of her life to chart out Old Testament prophecies. Can you guys see it? Old Testament prophecies that align with New Testament fulfillment. And this is what it looks like. Doesn't that look beautiful? It looks symmetrical. This is impossible. Remember we went through the details and the, the probability of one person doing six of these is astronomical, but imagine over 200. Okay, and I went through the details, the slides of the work that she put in, but this, oh, Karen Sawyer is her name, sorry, Karen Sawyer, you can look it up, okay? That's the evidence, but aside from all the evidence, who is that Jesus to you? He came, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's your enemy, that, there's, that's real. There's a real enemy who wants you to think about you and you alone, doesn't want you to think about God, doesn't want you to think about Jesus, doesn't want you to have a relationship with Jesus, just wants you to know it in your head, don't bring it to your heart, don't let it grow in your soul and your spirit, which is really who you are, doesn't want you to fully know and live in it, that truth, just wants you to let it be a compartment of your life. Oh yeah, that's, that's what I do on Sunday. That's, that's what I do on, you know, here. Doesn't, that's what the devil's goal is. That you take Jesus and you put him in some corner in your house, in a closet. Doesn't want you to enjoy the full life, the abundant life that God has for you. Jesus has such an abundant life for you, and I miss out on it a lot too. No one's perfect, but just know that there's, a, there's an enemy out there. That's why you need to change your worldview. It's not just what you see in your face. This is a big, big problem with, um, no, I don't wanna say problem. This is a big, big attack on your, on your generation. I'm past your generation. I'm from, I'm not Gen Z. Now, is it Gen Z now? Or is it, it was, is it alpha now? 
I thought it was Gen Sigma. But when I was in high school, they called us, what do they call us? Millennials? No, that's before, that's the one, the next after us, right? Anyway, Gen X. Gen X. No, it was something else. It was something else. But you guys, the, the bombardment of technology, the effects of all the other noise um, on your minds, on your hearts, on your souls, it's, it's an attack. And one of the major, major attacks is that it does, you know, the devil, as we saw the screw tape letters play, one of his biggest goals is that you don't think. Because the moment you stop, you stop going on cruise control and just taking in all this, or just being fueled by emotion or desire or that just whatever uh, animalistic nature to, you know, either be big or be tough or, or like want to, you know, the physical desire of sexual attraction or just give in to that or that, that the pressure now that you guys face, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And there's nothing that you see and what, what it does to you, and, and this is what the devil does. He try, he's trying to make your worldview so cluttered with so much stuff and a lot of it comes from your devices. It just reinforces all of it. All of it. You want to be selfish, self-centered. You want to be the best. You want to be the bomb. You'll have so many things at your disposal to reinforce that. The drip you wear or the way you look. I'm not saying that we should all like not care how we look or whatever. And just like, I mean, me personally, I, I like it. I like the way my wife looks with no makeup. 100% fact. And she's like, oh, I can't do that. And, you know, and I understand. I get it. I get it. Girls, my bad. I'm not a girl, so I don't know what you guys have to go through. And guys, you might not know now, but when you get in a serious relationship, hopefully that first serious relationship is your wife-to-be in Christ. You will understand and learn later that girls need a little more time to get ready. You cannot press them. Mm -mm. Unless you want to sleep on the couch. I get that, but a lot of that pressure, um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not truth. It's not absolute truth. God doesn't care if you wear makeup or not. God doesn't care about those little things. He just wants your heart. He just wants your heart because he loves you. Not because I want your heart because I'm God, and if you don't, I'm going to punish you. No, that's not, his, that's not where he's coming from. He just wants your time just a little bit. So in your worldview... It's cluttered and clouded. That's why you, I really hope, and that's why we collect your phones. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. And we went up to Sequoia, having it, not having it for three days. I know you guys started going through withdrawals, like, you know, halfway through it. But the reason why you get away from your phone is so that you can think. And you can think about these two things. And this is the kind of theme that we've been talking about. Thursday night Bible study, CBA Bible study. Your worldview, this material world, which is materialistic, and the spiritual one. And they're both real but only one lasts forever. Mm. Everything that you see, money, every building that you see, it's going to fade away eventually. It's going to be gone. Even your physical body is going to be gone one day. It's a part of life. Everybody will die physically. But the reality of what the Bible is saying, which I believe true, there is an afterlife. There is an afterlife. So this is the worldview I want you guys to think about, okay? Okay. Material world is finite. It doesn't last forever. The spiritual world is eternal. What world are you living in? You're living in this world, obviously, in a materialistic physical world, but do you live in a material physical, physical world knowing and realizing that the spiritual world is there as well? That spiritual forces of darkness in Ephesians 6 are constantly working to do all things to you, to distract you, to steal your peace, steal your joy, steal your focus from God, have you focus on self? Because if he, if, he if he can make you focus on yourself, then, he, then, he's, done his, then you know, he's, he's happy. The devil is happy. Okay? Now, some of you are like, I, I, me too, honestly. Sometimes you'll doubt because you can't see it. Can you see the spiritual world? 
Can you see demons? Can you see angels? Can you see the Holy Spirit? Can you see that the word, living word, is living and active, sharper than every double-edged sword? Can you actually see the word, like, working on your spirit and your heart? Can you see it physically? But does that mean it's not real or not true? But this is the crazy thing. Some people say that if they see it, they'll believe it, but I don't believe that to be true. I think if Jesus comes back, like, literally comes back, like, right now, there'll be people that'll be like, that's not real. That's CG. Oh, that's a deep fake. That's a deep fake video. That's not real. They won't believe it even if they see it. But guess what? There is now, if they didn't do it before, but now there's empirical, okay, let me use a, a different word, a measurable uh, data being collected about people who died and have experienced afterlife. Have you heard of this? Yeah? It's being more and more common. They're, now, wait, wait, wait about maybe five, 10 years, and they're going to come out with studies that really, really have hard uh, evidence of it. So let me, this is in 2023, in the New York Post, this is a New York Post story. This man died for three minutes, OK? He, had, he was 50 years old. He had complications. And, I, and this, this is a blurred out picture. But he had a, a disease on his, on his legs where he just started bleeding out. Okay? In three days, he lost two liters of blood, and then he flatlined. Okay? He flatlined. He flatlined. He died. Okay? So some people die and come back to life, not like Jesus. No one has ever died for three days and come back to life. That just, yeah, that's impossible. But he was, his heart was stopped beating. No more heart. Three minutes. They tried everything to resuscitate him. They were doing it. And then the final thing, they, he, then they resuscitated him. And now he's still, one year later, still alive. He's, he's eating pretty healthy, though. <laughs> I see. Okay. All right. But the study, the case studies that are being done now, this was last year. There are, this, someone has to explain to me. There are, there are documented cases where someone dies and they all say a similar thing. Have you heard of it? What do you see when you die? A light. And skeptics will say, oh, it's just the operating, operating light. Up. But the, he didn't have an operating light over his head. That's one thing. The, everyone says it's the operating light. And no one reports the cases of them seeing the other side. Like, no one wants to admit, I went to hell. Like, everyone wants to say they see the light. But in any case, there are those cases, too. Those are going to be documented. Anyway, anyway, there's this case where... One guy, he died, and he left his body. He saw the light. He went towards the light. It was, his soul was coming out of his body, and he was going up outside of the hospital building. Like, he was going up. And on his way up, he was like, it's not my time yet. And he came back down. And as on the way down, he was like, wait a minute. Those are some Adidas shoes over there with the red, white Adidas shoes. I know you heard the story, but they haven't. I said my whole year. So he came back, and he came back to life after being flatlined dead, and then told the doctors and nurses, there's a pair of Adidas on, on, a, on, a shoe, on the top of the hospital roof. And they're like, what are you talking about? There's a pair of Adidas. What the? So after he, he's recovering, and then you know, doctors and nurses, there's some, some doctors and nurses, they go up to smoke up there you know, at the top of the building. And they went up there, and like, whoa, there's a pair of Adidas. Uh, ding dong ding. Okay, that's one example, but there's so many examples like that of people dying, leaving their body, going to the next room, hearing the conversation, coming back, and then being like, yo, why are you talking about that? Like, I'm, I'm like, and then the people in the next room be like, what? how do you explain that? If there's no soul, if there's no spirit. But still, even if you saw it, it doesn't mean you'll believe it. That's why some of you are like, in your mind, you're like, I don't, I don't believe that, man. I, don't, I didn't see Jesus. I didn't see him die on the cross. I didn't see him rise from the dead. If I see it, I'll believe it. You know what? I don't think you will, even if you see it. Even if Jesus comes down from heaven as he's going to in the second coming, doubters will still doubt. Okay? That's why believing is not seeing faith is being confident in what we hope for and sure of what we do not see. Faith is, can't, it's not, that's what exactly the word means, faith. It's not, I see it, I'll believe it. No, faith is hoping for things you do not see, being certain of it. 
So again, it all boils down to this. Who is Jesus? In order to know someone, you need to know about them. So ask yourself, what do I know about Jesus? Do you know what he's done for you? Okay? No one else can do what Jesus did for you, by the way. No one else. I can't do it. No one can. He's the only one who was perfectly human, perfectly God, lived a perfect life, and what he did for you, no one else can do. He paid the debt of your sin because he's perfect. It counts. He shed his blood, his real blood, died his real life death for you on a cross. Okay, so the question is, have you received him? Okay, have you? Okay, that's the question. John 1.12 says, yet to all who receive him, and the, the part of that believe in his name, but if you receive him, he gives you the right to become a child of God. If you say, Jesus, I believe and I receive. I want to receive you. I want to welcome you into my life. I want you to be a part of my life because I believe in you. Okay? If you receive it, God gives you the right and he says, you're my child. In fact, this faith even that you are professing and saying I believe in Jesus is a what? It's a gift. So this is how it really is, actually. It's not just the act of I believe, open my heart, I receive. No. Here's the gift of salvation that God gives to you. Hey, guys, look at me. It's almost over. Here's the gift of salvation. Jesus dies on the cross for you, pays the debt, and he gives you that as a gift. He's like, hey, it's free. The payment of sin I paid, but I'm not going to force you to receive it. It's there for you if you want. It's a gift. You want it? And if you receive that gift, you receive salvation. You become a child of God. Amen? How many of you received that gift? Yeah? Have you seen that gift? Did you receive that gift? Yes. Yes? Okay. Well, put your hands down. What are you doing with that gift? I told you what I did with that gift for about 20 years of my life. I put it in the attic. I received the gift. I put it in the attic. You know what the attic is? Huh? Your brain. Attic? Attic of a house? So if you put it in the closet, you can still have access to it. In the, in the attic, you have to, t like a ladder has to come down, you have to climb in, and it's where no one lives. It's like where all the fiberglass is, the insulation of your house. That's where I put it. If you receive the gift of salvation, what have you done with it? God wants you, Jesus wants you to open the gift. He wants you to experience the gift. Does that make sense? If I gave you a gift, you know, this would be a complete misunderstanding, but if I gave you a gift, I said, Fiona, happy birthday, and I gave you a gift, and Fiona said, Pastor Sam, how much do I have to pay you? Don't understand the gift. You don't pay nothing. It's free. It's a gift. Here, take it. All I would desire is for her to say thank you, open the gift, and enjoy it. God gives you the gift of salvation. He doesn't want you to pay for it, but you can't. It's not, that's not what a gift is. He wants you to receive it, and then he wants you to open the gift. He wants you to look what's inside the gift, and he wants you to use the gift and enjoy the gift. Does that make sense? So if you have received Jesus, what are you doing with that gift of salvation? Where is it? Is it in your closet? Do you take it out once a week? On Sunday, or are you looking at it every day? Because that gift, it's priceless, guys. It's not PS4, it's PS Infinity. <laughs> it's not 2K on a video game, it's real life. And being a child of God is being better than Michael Jordan. Being, it's a bad, bad reference. It's better than LeBron. Who's the real king? It ain't LeBron James. If Jesus was on the court, oh my God, bro. Forget about broken ankles. Dude, it would just be. There's no defense for Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's perfect. It's impossible. 20 for 20. Just the other day, Dylan was like, Coach, I'm 19 for 20 from the three-point line. That's a 2K. Jesus would be 20 for 20. Okay, it's kind of silly to say, but that gift of salvation... He wants you to open, and that's not where it ends. As you open, open the gift, you're enjoying the gift of Christ, your identity as a child of God, your value, your worth. Aside from whatever is going on in your life, whatever's happened in your past, that's, 
It's done. The past, all the guilty past is under the blood. It's done. It's forgiven. It's over. If you open up that gift and you're enjoying that gift of salvation, your new identity in Christ, the ultimate purpose is that now you give that gift just as freely as you received it, you give it to someone else. And there's joy there. There's so much joy there. There's purpose there. Everything in your life would circle and center on it. Your relationships with your significant other, with your future wife, with your children. Everything has different meaning and purpose if you understand the centrality of Christ. Okay? So I bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, that you guys wrestle with that this week. Your worldview. Just don't be, don't be fooled by what you see, guys. Don't be fooled by what you see or what you hear. There's so much more going on than that. Okay? Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. Let's sing this together. And can we keep it at that tempo and that volume? No, well, whatever. You guys. Our Father. Our Father in heaven. Hallow it be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Come on, guys. On earth as it is in heaven. We're praying for God's will. Give us today. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Open up your spiritual eyes and pray. Live not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory for ever. Amen. All right, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the precious souls that you have brought to CYG. Lord, you know exactly what they're going through, every single one. And Father, I pray that as you work in their hearts this week, starting from this day, help them, Lord, to put aside some time to think, to deeply contemplate the cross, to deeply contemplate Jesus and their value and worth because of what he has done. Um, Give them your grace, Lord. I pray against all the forces of darkness, the temptations and lies of the enemy that twist the truth, that tries to distract, that tries to divide, that tries to bring pain and shame and guilt and suffering. May all the dirty, slick, evil plans and ways of the enemy be bound in the mighty name of Jesus. May they take no foothold in their lives this week. Protect them, Lord. Send your host of angels to guard their hearts and their minds. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for this time and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, this is what I want you guys to go through.